All right, well, we've been talking about various ways that you can go and upgrade your service code from one version to another version. When you do a rolling update, which is very common for people to want to do because there's no downtime and it's cost effective, there is this issue, though, where you have version 1 and version 2 services running at the same time within the same cluster. And if you want to try to update your protocols that you're using to communicate between the different instances of your service, from version 1 to version 2, there, is, there are some issues there because a version 2 service can't be talking version 2 protocol to a version 1 service. So in order to make that work correctly and be able to upgrade your protocols, you have to do what's called a two-phase update. And that's what I'm going to talk about here now. So first of all, I've been talking about APIs and how all APIs request all API requests must pass a version number, and you really start, st start doing that starting with version 1 of your service. Right? Be thinking about versioning from the very beginning, not when it's time for version 2. New service ver versions must be backward compatible, and I've talked about this in more detail earlier on in this course. But what about intra-service instance requests? During a rolling update, old and new service instances are going to be running together at the same time within the same cluster. And failure will occur if a version 2 instance makes a version 2 API request to a version 1 service instance. So how can you go about updating the protocol so that everything is working fine? As I said, we fix this by performing what's called a two-phase update. And here's how the two phases work. First, you deploy your version 2 service instances into the cluster, and because backward compatibility must always be maintained, your version 2 instances must be able to accept and respond to version 1 API requests. But your version 2 instances, they will never send a version 2 API request. Right? They will accept v1 and they will respond v1, but they will never send out a v2. Therefore, there would be, never be a reason to respond to a v2. Then, after you know that all the instances in the cluster have been upgraded to v2, then you can reconfigure those instances to flip a switch to say, now you can start sending v2. Now, that doesn't happen atomically either within the instances of the cluster. So some instances that didn't get the reconfiguration notification yet, they will still be sending v1, but that all works because you're backward compatible. And then some instances will be sending v2, but because you know they're all v2 instances in the cluster, all instances can now receive the v2 protocol request and respond to it successfully. Now, the only downside of this is that you now have within your code base support for the v1 protocol as well as support for the v2 protocol. You might want to, and this is a, a big might, you might not want to, but you might want to go and remove the code for the v1 protocol. So as an optional thing that you can do, I mentioned here at the bottom of the slide, after you know the, all the instances have been upgraded within the cluster uh, and everything is talking v2, you could go and make like a version 2.1 of your code that simply removes the v1 code out of it, and then you can go and up, uh, update again from version 2 to version 2.1 in the cluster, and now everything's just talking v2, and all the v1 code has been successfully removed out of the code base. So you don't have to just drag that v1, you know, basically dead code along indefinitely. So that's what a two-phase update is. That's when you would need to perform it. Um, it's a little bit complicated to do, to orchestrate it, but it's not too bad.